You have a lot of components in your React app and you're passing props around from parents to children to lists and so on and everything seems to be working when it comes to the app logic. But then you start to realize that the app becomes sluggish for some reason. Or maybe you use React DevTools and notice how a lot of components get re-rendered for no reason. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix exactly this issue and we're gonna learn a lot about optimizations in React. If you're curious, let's get started. All right, guys, before we dive deep into code and start optimizing our app, I would actually suggest going to React documentation to see what they actually recommend us when it comes to optimizations. So in the docs under advanced guides, we have this section called optimizing performance. And there they give different techniques on what to pay attention to when it comes to optimizations. And this section is what we're going to be focusing on. How does React re-render its children and how does it decide to do so? I would actually suggest going through this content to be familiar with it. Now, going back to our example app, I gotta say that it's unfortunately not performant. We have this state in the parent and we're rendering three children boxes with input fields. As soon as I start typing something, it's gonna propagate back to the parent and update the state. But look at these re-render numbers. These are simply random numbers that I put there. But as soon as I start typing in one of the boxes, all three start changing. It means they're being re-rendered. To kind of prove that, we need to have React DevTools installed, and I have it. And I'm gonna go to the profiler. In the profiler settings, I'm gonna turn on this checkbox called Highlight Updates When Components Render. And now it's gonna give us a really nice representation. So I start typing something. As you can see, all three boxes have highlighting. It means they're, the components is literally being re-rendered every time I type a letter. So obviously that's not good. Why should other components get re-rendered when I'm typing only in one of them? Let's go to the code. In the code, our parent component is called app and it holds the state for three items that are being looped through. The loop is here and we are creating an item component and passing different props to it, such as key, ID, value. So ID is here and we're also passing value and we're also passing a handler function as a prop. In the item.js, which is basically the child, we have this re-render that I told you about, but we also have this onChange function, which is going back to the parent and we then fire change value function, which is basically updates the states with this set item values. So there we map, we look for the exact the same ID that triggers the input change and we're updating its value. Pretty simple so far, right? So let's take a closer look at what's happening here. So I'm going to start changing the value in the middle box. So as you can see, the state also changed, but apparently it triggers re-rendering in two adjacent boxes. Why? Why is one of the objects is changing and we are re-rendering all three objects, meaning all three items here? Well, one of the most common misconceptions about React is that it's not gonna re-render children unless these three props have not been changed. In fact, that's not true. As long as the parent gets re-rendered, it re-renders all of its children recursively. So. That's what's causing our performance issue. To alleviate that, we can use this memo function. So we simply wrap our component in memo. Memo function simply memoizes this component. Memoizing means that it's gonna remember what the previous prop was, and if it didn't change, then it's not gonna re-render our item.js. And we imported it very simply, and I think that should fix the problem. Let's go back to the app, refresh and start typing again and hope that it works. Well, I start typing example, but you see that the components are still getting re-rendered. Hmm, something is wrong here. I wonder why. So it means one of these props still changed. So the parent still changed one of these props, but why? It should have been memoized. Well, let's dig deeper. Let's go to the profiler again and now turn on this thing under profiler and it's called record why each component re-rendered while 
profiling, very self-explanatory. Let's start recording. And as we record, I'm going to change the value in this middle box. So I am editing and let's stop the recording and see what we have. So we have these three boxes that have been changed. So let's start from the middle box. What, why did this re render? So props changed value. Obviously I changed the value. All right, makes sense. And on change, let's look at the first box. Props changed on change. That doesn't look right. And the same here. So going back to the code, it seems like this unchanged prop got updated, although these two guys are fine. So let me explain why. When the state in the parent gets updated, React recreates the whole component, basically re-renders it. And whenever it gets re-rendered, this changed value function gets recreated. So imagine it's recreated. How does the child know that this is the same function that was passed before the re-rendering. It doesn't. That's why we need to make sure that it somehow stays in the memory. Well, not literally in the memory, but keeps the same reference. Well, for that, we can use the hook called use callback. It works very similar to memoizing, so use memo, although it doesn't work with usual props, but it works with functions. So I'm going to import use callback now. And what we do is we simply wrap our change value function with use callback. Okay, something is wrong. There's a yellow underline. Let's see. Did you forget to pass an array of dependencies? Well, apparently use callback works very similar to use effect. So it expects an array of dependencies. In our case, we don't have any dependencies. We simply wanted to kind of memoize the function. So we pass an empty array. And now let's get back to our app and we're going to be typing again. But first, clear the console and let's change one of the boxes. Editing. And as you can see, the re-render numbers are not changing. And also there's no outline in other boxes, meaning React DevTools does not recognize any re-renderings anymore. And that was it. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please give this video a like. It's going to help me a lot. And if you are interested in optimizing your JavaScript code as a whole, and you want to find memory leaks in your apps, make sure to check this video out. It's going to be interesting, I promise.